Emin Khan here for Seconds Out with world champion Terry Harper in Dublin. Terry, how are you doing? I'm very well. I am good. I'm a little bit tired because it was really wake up, but other than that, I'm just buzzing to be here. I feel your tiredness, but your infectious smile is pulling me through. I can imagine why, because you've got Cecilia Breakouts in the opposing corner. How did this fight come about? Um, I just, like, I feel like for every fighter they want to be undisputed. But for me, that fight's, that fight's not going to happen. Obviously, things out of my control. So I said to Andrew, I want the next best fight that can be made up at this weight. And for me, that's that was Cecilia Breakouts. Um, she wants another roll of the dice. And... Um, the fight was so easy to make and respect to Brackhouse and her team. Uh, there were a few touch and go moments where I thought we were going to lose the fight to Sky, Sky and uh, Natasha Jonas, but Brackhouse really stuck to her word and uh, she's come through and now we're on such a great card and we can put on a great fight. Brackhouse is very much considered a legend in the female uh, sport. It was uh, quite surprising the, the two losses to Jessica McCaskill from quite a few people in boxing. Uh, what did you make of those two fights and have you seen things in those two fights that you can take into the game plan on May 20th? Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not reading too much into it. Obviously McCaskill is a completely unorthodox fighter, very strong coming forward, but um, I need to focus on my strengths for that fight and um, obviously Brad, I feel like Sometimes I got to sit back and think, why did Brackhouse uh, choose me for this fight? Does she see something? Does she see a weakness that she feels like she can beat me on? So uh, I got really got to be on, on on the ball the night and uh, really fetch my A game. Where do you feel a win over Brackhouse puts you? Oh, I feel like it skyrockets my career, if I'm honest. Um, on such an amazing uh, show and event as well, I feel like all eyes are going to be going to be on on us that night. So I feel like. This is my opportunity now to really take my career to the next level and um, hopefully push on for uh, greater fights that can be made. And uh, if there's no, no fights up at Super World Weight, we're, we're happy, more than happy to be moving down weights. And um, just we just want to fight the best. I've been, been in the game a good couple of years now, so um, I feel like it's time to get in the ring and just, just mix in with the best, just like uh, Katie and Chantal are doing. Do you feel you need that bit of that rocket strapped to you? Not because you need it necessarily, but because boxing is so fluid right now, people keep, the spotlight moves on to the next person, you need that spotlight back on you. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, so, so like when, when I had the fight against Hannah, I thought, oh, that's it. We're going to get the Natasha Jonas fight. I've got the last thing she needs to become undisputed. And uh, for some reason, she didn't want to take the fight. So... Uh, we've had to look at other paths to go down and we're not waiting around for that fight no more and um, it's about uh, creating my own legacy and uh, just going down my own path now and like I said just going on to fight fight the best fight the best in this game. In your own words why didn't the Natasha Jonas fight happen? I don't know childish uh, I don't even know like she, I, I think it's just personal reasons with her and Andrew but I just feel like how can how can you let Andrew stop you from earning all that money and just getting back out there and giving the fans what they want? But yeah, I've got no comment because I just find it very bizarre. Just an extra question on it: Do you feel it will ever happen again, or do you think it's completely gone? No idea. No idea. Fair enough, Terry. I appreciate that. Let's take a look at the main event, that being Katie Taylor versus Chantal Cameron. An excellent fight here, uh, a homecoming for Katie Taylor. A homecoming that you get to taste firsthand because you'll be on the, the undercard. First of all, those Dublin fans, they're vociferous. They'll be supporting uh, Katie. They'll be loud for you too as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, be I'm very excited. And uh, just being out at Madison Square Garden in New York, that honestly, that was, that was amazing. And the fans and the following she had, she had over there and... Just think, we're, we're, I'm at home coming. Um, just like saying, saying to my friends and family that this is once in a lifetime experience, and uh, I was trying to explain to them how it was on the night at Madison Square Garden, and just this is here three arena is going to be ten times that. Fancy jumping down to Super Light? <laughs> we want the big fights. <laughs> Talk to me about the fight then. The breakdown, the fight between the two of them. Who do you favour out of Taylor and Cameron? Katie, because obviously she's got the there's something about the home crowd. Um, it, it brings a different side, different side out of you. It, uh, it gives you that uh, extra gear that you, sometimes you need to to get you through the through the walls. And um, I just I feel like I know Katie's moving up weight. Um, uh, Chantelle's a very big, uh, big strong fighter. And um, but I feel like. 
Kate has been there in the took to the trenches by Pursuit and stuff, and she she really held her own. And I just feel like it's going to be the same again. Kate is going to use a boxing speed, a uh, boxing IQ and stuff. And I just feel like I, I don't know. It's a it's a 50-50 fight, but um, it's going to be it's going to be a great fight anyway. Whatever happens. Whenever I've been witness to an interview or being part of an interview with Kate Taylor on Zoom or otherwise at Huddle, people always bring out like, how do you keep going? How You've won all this. You, how do you keep motivated? You know, the, the classic silk sheets and stuff. Does that motivate you to keep winning titles and keep pushing because of the achievements that she's made in the sport? Yeah, um, I feel like just, just seeing the fight that's been made shows the type of character uh, Kate is and uh, she could have chosen an easier fight than this once Amanda Serrano pulled out. Um, but Brian were just listing some fighters off back, uh, in the back uh, who she wants to fight and I just think big fight after big fight after big fight and um, I guess that's what keeps her going and keeps her hungry and keeps that fire burning. Do you think we'll get to see the uh, Taylor Serrano 2 fight in the future? Yeah, I hope so. Um, hopefully Serrano makes a full recovery with injury. I'm not quite sure what it is but um, it was just such a great great fight that night and. Um, It'd be a shame if it, if it didn't happen, but I'm sure they've got a lot of uh, support and, and backing from uh, a lot of people in boxing for that fight to, for, for fight to happen. How did you read the first fight and do you think it'll be any different in the second if they do clash? Oh, I feel like Katie were too cute, uh, her boxing skills just too sharp and stuff and I feel like Amanda really just like following him flat footed and stuff and uh, that last round, that were, that were, I was holding my breath, uh, just so amazing, but um, I feel like it would probably pan out the same way, if, if, if not, yeah. Talked about spotlight in uh, boxing, uh, Hannah Rankin was featured on BBC, it seems like there's more and more eyes now on the women's, women's sport and women's side of the game. Yeah, um, it's, it's these great fights that are being put on, um, it's, it's just the, the sport's just growing and uh, I feel like this fight, Chantel and Katie, um, again, it's best v best, and that only will just attract more eyes uh, to us, to us female fighters. And uh, that's what that's what Matchroom Sky, uh, Matchroom Sky, uh, BBC, whatever, just need to keep put, throwing out these great women fights and just really keep keep the ball rolling with it. Terry, tell me, what does a good 2023 look like for you? Successful defence, uh, May 20th, um, and then hopefully push on. I just uh, hopefully another bigger fight um, before the end of the year. Uh, I'm hoping to get out three times this year, um, but yeah, just just stay happy, healthy, and I just keep enjoying what I'm doing. And then finally, tell me, uh, successful defence. How do you do it? As much as you can say, how do you beat Cecilia Breakhouse? Uh, I just need to use youth as my advantage, and similar to uh, when I fought Eva Wallstrom back in 2020, just um, using my youth and. Um, kind of see it a bit as passing of the baton and um, that's that's how I feel like it'll go down and just got to be switched on on the night and not let the whole occasion get to me and just stay focused on the job I've got to do. Terry, absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for giving us out. All pleasure. the best. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.